Welcome to our webinar, How Atlassian Does DevOps. And now Michael will explain how our build engineering team build the infrastructure to support Atlassian software engineers to build and deploy Atlassian products to you, our customers. Hi everyone, uh, I'm Mike. I've been on Atlassian's build engineering team for a couple of years. Uh, we're a team of about a dozen people. And I think we're a good example of an internal uh, infrastructure and services team doing DevOps within Atlassian. So I'd like to share with you how we work. So as build engineers, our goal is to optimize dev speed. Atlassian devs have a lot of responsibility already, so we try to reduce any sources of friction they might encounter uh, when trying to build and deploy their software. Specifically, we run the continuous integration service, which is Bamboo, the artifact storage systems, which is Xenotype Nexus, uh, and associated tooling that glues them all together and provides a smooth experience. So we're providing a number of services, and we look after things all the way down the stack, from the hardware, server configuration, and the applications that provide the services themselves. Now, I just wanted to take a moment to clarify, especially for those not too familiar uh, with this space, our team's purpose is to provide these build services, which are a critical part of the DevOps tool chain, uh, but we very much practice what we preach and make heavy use of this tooling ourselves. So I'm really just going to be talking about how our team practices DevOps in the course of delivering our services, rather than uh, just telling you how you should run your builds. So we're a very self-sufficient team. Uh, we look after our own deployment pipeline, infrastructure provisioning, monitoring, uh, our service desk and user communications, uh, and documentation. Uh, we're not going to have time to go through all of these, uh, but we'll cover some of the most important ones. In build engineering, our customers are the Atlassian developers, and one of the main ways they contact us is via our service desk. It provides a clean and neat way for us to collect requests or customer feedback. Uh, we also have a hip chat room as well, but Jira Service Desk is uh, nice and particularly important because it acts as a funnel for us uh, for, for issues to come into our Kanban board. So the Kanban board is the board that our team works off. Every morning at our stand-ups we go through all the issues currently in flight and we call this walking the board. It's a good way for everyone uh, to stay in the loop about what's going on and to ask for help uh, if we're stuck with any of our issues. As you can see, we have a number of columns here. Some of them you may already be familiar with, like uh, ready, in progress, and done. Uh, we also have a review column uh, for issues that have pull requests that need to be uh, approved, uh, and a merge column for work that is ready to be deployed. Uh, so the columns also have capacity limits on them as well, uh, which just uh, is an indication of uh, how many issues we think should be in those columns at a maximum and if those cards uh, exceed that capacity the columns go red. Uh, this helps us uh, focus on our throughput uh, and, and focus on finishing in-progress work before we pick up anything new. Uh, and just to give you an idea uh, from when an issue starts, uh, starts work in progress uh, we're likely to finish it probably in a day or two so it'll be in production in about a day or so. So just going back to the pull requests, uh, our pull requests are done in Bitbucket. Uh, here's an example of one of them. Uh, so we require two approvals uh, from our colleagues uh, and a green uh, feature branch build. Uh, I guess feature branch is a bit of a misnomer because we, we create branches for any change, no matter how small it is at all. Uh, and each pull request needs to be linked to a JIRA issue uh, and the, the JIRA issue you can see is integrated into Bitbucket and we can see it on the screen there, uh, which gives us good context about the change. And there's also integration with Bamboo as well, of course, showing us the status of the build. Uh, and the green branch build specifically gives us confidence that the change almost definitely won't break our master branch, which is always our release branch. Uh, and we've actually configured Bitbucket not to allow us to merge the PR at all unless that criteria is met, the green feature branch build and the two approvals. So this is very important for our platform stability. Our team also has a hip chat room with a custom hip chat bot we wrote to keep track of our pull requests. Uh, in addition to our Kanban board, it shows all the open pull requests and how close they are to being merged. So we don't actually nominate reviewers specifically in the pull requests. We leave it up to the team to uh, I guess kind of swarm over the pull requests and if they're already familiar with that part of our platform they can jump in there and 
and provide feedback. So like the Kanban board, this helps us tackle work that's already in progress uh, and, and focus on getting things through the pipeline faster. Uh, and so as per Kanban philosophy, this helps reduce our in-progress work and deliver the value faster. When PRs have been merged and integrated to our master branch and the subsequent master build has also gone green, uh, we use Bamboo to deploy those changes to production. Uh, and we have good integration between uh, Bamboo and HipChat, uh, so we send the deployment status from Bamboo into our team's HipChat room. So this keeps everyone uh, across all the changes that are going out to production. And if there are any failures, uh, we can swarm on that. Everyone stops what they're doing. Uh, and tries to fix up any problems there. So the most important pipelines we use on our team are our two infrastructure as code pipelines. Uh, the first is our software pipeline, which is essentially our puppetry for configuration management of our servers, and our hardware pipeline, which uses a tool called Terraform to interact with AWS uh, to make changes to our server topography, like spinning up new servers or changing settings on elastic load balances, both allow for incredible levels of automation and are really the foundation of our team's productivity. So as with all our pipelines, the software pipeline is managed by Bamboo, and we use Puppet to write modules to install and configure software components on our servers. So we might have a module to install the SSH keys of everyone in our team onto all our servers, uh, or it could be uh, managing an entire application uh, like Cenotype Nexus, setting it up, configuring it. Uh, and automated testing is a big part of this pipeline. So we use Vagrant to spin up staging servers with specific configurations that mimic what we have in production. Uh, and on those Vagrant servers, we apply the Puppet configuration on them, and we run tests to confirm expected behavior. And we'll look at that in more detail in a second. Uh, but for some of these servers, we also use a tool called Packer to automatically generate uh, disk images, or AMIs in our case, uh, which we use as the base for the Elastic Build agents of our Bamboo servers. So I mentioned uh, we run tests after Puppet runs on those staging servers from Vagrant. For this, we use a tool called Cucumber, which is a, a framework for testing behavior. Here's an example of how we test the Puppet module used to install uh, Haskell on our build agent servers. So it's pretty simple. We just run some basic commands and check the expected result. It's just enough to, to show that the application is installed properly. Our build agents have a lot of build tools and a lot of configuration on them. So these tests give us confidence that any changes we make haven't broken anything. So after all the tests in our software pipeline have run and the master build has gone green, we'll deploy our new Puppet tree out to production. Uh, and as I mentioned before, the deployment notifications in our HipChat room will prompt the issue assignee, the person in charge of making the change, to verify that the change is working in production and then close off the JIRA issue. So JIRA's integration with both Bitbucket and Bamboo lets everyone see an issue effectively move through the pipeline up to where it's ready uh, for manual verification and resolution. Here is what the pipeline looks like in Bamboo itself. At a glance, we can see the status of the build and even the details of the release, with, uh, like which environments the release has already been deployed to. Uh, and you can also click on the Issues tab to see what JIRA issues are addressed in a particular build or a particular release. Uh, and this is especially useful for us because we often have multiple changes batched into a single build uh, due to the long length it takes our pipeline to, to run. All right, so our second uh, most important pipeline is our hardware pipeline. Uh, and uh, we refer to this uh, internally as our Terraform pipeline. So as before, Bamboo manages everything from start to finish, and it gives us visibility into what's deployed where. Uh, we make heavy use of Amazon Web Services like EC2, S3, RDS, IAM, lots of things. Uh, so we use Terraform uh, as a tool uh, that's kind of analogous to Puppet, but instead of configuration management, it manages hardware infrastructure uh, for AWS and other cloud providers. 
So uh, similar to Puppet, it allows us to apply software best practices to changes in our server topology. Uh, changes to Terraform are verified uh, through pull requests and deployed through a continuous delivery pipeline, uh, just like you'd do for software or our earlier configuration management. Uh, so just to give you an idea, because I suspect there may be a lot of people that don't manage their hardware in this way, um, here's a quick example of uh, what Terraform code looks like. So here we're declaring a new AWS instance resource that we want to use as a, a NAT server, uh, and it's based off a particular AMI. We can also specify the availability zone, the instance type, uh, and some other parameters, including the subnet it should be spun up in, um, and the configuration of the subnet is specified below. So we feed our entire hardware configuration into our Terraform pipeline, and Terraform, Terraform works out what AWS API calls are necessary to change our server topography from what it currently is to what is specified by the code. Uh, and in a separate phase, we can ask Terraform to execute this plan to actually make those changes. So Bamboo lets us uh, turn the results of the master branches build into uh, what, what's called a release. So in this case, our Terraform plan is, is the release. And we can use Bamboo to deploy that release into first our staging environment, and then later our production environment. Uh, and, and the deployment itself is, is where the actual execution of the Terraform plan occurs. Uh, so Bamboo is really useful for tracking which release has been deployed to which environment. In this case, we can see release 549 was deployed to both environments, um, but have both been superseded by a later release in this case. Um, so just to finish up, I'd like to cover some of the core concepts that, uh, that drive our team and the methodologies we use. So the first one is automate everything. Uh, automated testing helps prevent regressions and gives us uh, confidence in our changes. And it, it really opens up the possibility of being able to use continuous delivery. Uh, it also reduces human error. Uh, for example, if you need to configure a dozen servers by hand, you're, you're definitely going to have errors uh, doing that. Uh, and it also allows you to keep your team small. So small teams is uh, really quite a, quite a benefit. Uh, lowers communication overheads, lowers costs, uh, and allows you to move faster. So the next core concept is continuous delivery. So that means that our pipelines are, are always releasable, which means we can do frequent releases with small changes, which reduces risk and lets us deliver value sooner. And it's really the the cornerstone of, of our team's velocity. It is what lets us move, move quickly. And the last concept is infrastructure as code. So configuration as code with Puppet was a huge game changer for us. Uh, it it enabled us to use software best practices, but applied to hardware and configuration management. Uh, it allows us to, to scale really, really well. Uh, just the other week, I had to double the number of Bamboo servers that our team offered from 10 to 20. And thanks to our infrastructure as code approach, it, it was pretty much the same amount of work as if I just had to create one. Uh, and it's resilient and transparent. So this automation and the ability to review and test it has given us so much more confidence when making changes and greatly uh, has greatly improved the stability of our platform. So the results. Uh, I've been with the team for several years, uh, and uh, over that time, uh, we've seen roughly a 10 times increase in the number of builds run at Atlassian, but we've been able to keep the build engineering team pretty much the same size, uh, which considering Atlassian's growth is quite a feat. Uh, and due to adopting DevOps practices, we're now able to deploy changes with far higher confidence at, an, at a much greater velocity than before. So generally, I'd say, DevOps practices have allowed our team to be faster, more reliable, and more independent, and we've noticed our customers are far happier for it. So that's a quick glance of what DevOps looks like within Atlassian's build engineering team. Thank you for watching our webinar on how Atlassian does DevOps. If you want to get the Atlassian tools to practice DevOps, click on the green Go button on the left. To check how to run IT support the DevOps way, Click the video on the right of your screen. To continue on the next section of this webinar, 
click the See What's Next button on the bottom right of your screen. Thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.